Greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, another Hollywood celebrities dropping like flies and other people dropping like flies. Um, I don't know when this video is. I'm starting this on November, Wednesday, November 15th, but I don't know when it's coming out because I got a glut of videos now, which I explained in my last video here. Um, and I might have to conclude some Will Smith stuff tomorrow or the next day when I put this out, probably. Friday, Thursday or Friday. But anyways, let's start here. This is a passenger who missed her flight. So she just walked out. Is this what's called the tarmac? I believe. Yeah, the tarmac. And she's berating the pilot to open up and let her in. <laughs> um, somebody is taping her. Some is, uh, you know, videoing her. Of course they are. And so I don't know how she got out there. Um... But they're, I guess they didn't let her in. So, like, that just shows you things are breaking down there. Euphoria producer Kevin Turen, dead at 44, cause of death not yet determined. Well, this was from a couple days ago. Um, I guess that's him here in the middle. They're saying it's an accidental overdose. I think that shows a lot about drugs. Euphoria, I've never seen it. I've seen some commercials for it. But I think they do a lot of drugs on that set of that show. Faint new sky object is actually NASA astronauts lost tool bag now <laughs> orbiting the Earth. So if you see a faint new night sky object, sharp-eyed stargazers can be on the lookout in the weeks ahead for an unlikely new object shining in the night sky, a tool bag. The tool bag has only floated away from two NASA astronauts during a spacewalk for maintenance outside the International Space Station on November 1st. Well, maybe they can find the lost um, tapes with the telemetry data on it for the moon landing. <laughs> Did those float away too? Um, so there's obviously something going to happen in the night sky that ain't a tool bag. Learning to drive and then this car here. Um, you know, a lot of things that like this are happening. Donald Trump's sister found dead in Upper Side East Side apartment. Um, she was 86, so, you know, her cause of death is a little less suspect. A father upset with Steph, Steph Curry for ignoring his son after the 8-year-old son saved $2,500 and purchased a courtside seat at an NBA game. Move back, please, says the security. So how does an 8-year-old... Um, save $2,500. Did he have a lemonade stand? Like, <laughs> and who paid for the dad's ticket? So, like, this is a privileged kid, right? They are sitting courtside at a Houston Rockets game, and the courtside seats are $2,500. You know, I'm a basketball fan, but I don't even, you know, I would never pay anything to go see a basketball game. <laughs> You know, I, I played basketball, and I'll watch it on TV if I can fast-forward through the commercials and the other BS. But the hassle of going to a stadium, like, I don't enjoy these things live, right? Um, but to pay $2,500 for a courtside seat to a kid who really probably doesn't even understand the game. And then Steph Curry, they, the game is over. My 8-year-old saved $2,500 to sit courtside so he can meet Steph Curry, and then this happened. Okay, explain how he saved this, right? The $2,500 doesn't include meeting the players. Like, that isn't something you get to do. That's not a, included in the price of the ticket. And so, please document how your son saved $2,500, your 8-year-old kid. Please explain how he got this money. And so um, he used all of his money. Ask him. So here's the kid here. Very lame attempt to get Steph Curry's attention here. But look at this poor kid. This poor kid who spent all of his life savings on floor side seats to meet Steph Curry. And here he is desperately wanting to, to meet him. I mean, let him know you spent all that money. They saved all that money, and, he, and he's entitled to get an autograph here because that's included in the price of the ticket, even though he's an opposing player. And a lot of people are holding up his jersey here, wanting him to sign. Like, there's lots of people here all holding up his jersey. And so, you know, 
My His job is done. Saved two thousand five hundred dollars. His job is done, right? And a lot of people have his autograph. I don't know how good he is or not at giving them, but you know, this is um, entitlement here. Rapino says injury in her last game is proof that God doesn't exist. <laughs> this is a wonderful quote here. Um, I wasn't emotional about it. Or she said this: "I'm not a religious person or anything." If there was a God, this is proof that there isn't. This is effed up, Rapino said in her post-game interview. For sure, I tore my Achilles describing the moment of the injury, a huge pop. I wasn't overly emotional about it. I, I mean, effing yeeted my Achilles in the sixth minute in the last, my last game ever in literally the championship game. So she's playing her last game football soccer game ever. And she... um. You know, she her Achilles popped, which is a bad injury. And she says, because of the circumstances, and she's such a good devotional person that God didn't prevent this from happening. <laughs> but all the other athletes, you know, it, I mean, only her, only when it happened to her, it means there's no God. Okay, so one of my viewers sent me this. Most of everything here is sent by viewers. Um, there's so much weird stuff out there, I can't keep up with it. And I'll talk about that. At the end of the video, there's stuff that people send me I can't show you. It would the video would be demonetized or whatever. But there's so ma there's so much effed up stuff out there. And this woman is a gospel singer, and she wants to bless her fellow passengers with a song. And a flight attendant isn't having it, isn't having it, and it's kind of gone viral and helped her case. So I have mixed feelings about this. It's very entertaining. So there's that. <laughs> um, like, I'm glad it happened. And she ends up being a good singer. But there's narcissism here, right? Like anybody who makes an announcement about their success to a plane full of strangers and wants to bless them with her, her, um, you know, her gift. <laughs> and, the, you know, the flight attendant is not having it. And I'm up for two Grammys. I sing for the Lord. And my song is out on all platforms. It's called We Can't Forget Them. Michael McDonald cleared it. Warren G is on the original record. Announced to the, a plane full of strangers that you're a pseudo celebrity and you're nominated for a couple Grammys. Check. Drop some names. <laughs> Check. As well. It's with regulators. I want to share this with you guys. I wanted to do it when I first got on the plane, but I was like, you know, I, I haven't done this in a while. I've gotten to the next status, so. Are you able to be quiet? But they're enjoying it. So while we're sitting here, could I please? I'm not enjoying it. So I'm asking you, can you be quiet? Okay. So it's all about you. <laughs> I'm not enjoying it. And that's why I knew this was going to be great. Now, it could be this guy is in on it. You know, Delta Airlines is getting free publicity which she talks to Delta ends up reaching out to her and she's getting an enormous amount of publicity because I see this is being covered by, you know, somebody sent it to me yesterday and then this morning I've seen it all over the place. This is a better version than the one that was Instagram just has the crappiest quality videos on it. And it's always loud and, you know, I mean, YouTube's so much better in terms of my ability to, you know, you use it here. But, um, you know, there's all this stuff going on here, right? This is going viral. I'm talking about it. Like, when do I talk about gospel singers? And so, you know, you can never discount people using this sort of thing to promote themselves and, you know, do some sort of partnership with Delta or whatever it is, right? Um, but it is, it's funny. And, you know, I, I don't know why someone went on a plane would be upset by this because if somebody starts talking to the plane and says they're going to sing for you, you know, I'm hoping the singing's bad, you know, because that's entertaining. You're, when you're on a plane, you're basically killing time. 
And so when something happens that's unusual, you know, unless it's, um, you know, make, they make you clear the flight because, you know, so, <laughs> something like this. But if something like this happens or some woman gets up and says that that m and are back there, is it, it's not real. You know, if somebody's not real, if somebody says something like that, you know, it's entertaining, right? Well, that's, a yes, that's a yes or no uh, answer, please. Am I going to go to jail if I don't? Can you please answer my question? Are you willing and able to be quiet right now? I'm doing what the Lord is telling me to do. I'm asking you a question, yes or no. I'm your flight leader. I need you to follow my instruction. The best part is when she says, I'm just doing what the Lord does. <laughs> the Lord, I'm doing the Lord's work. <laughs> like that's, that's the best part. Okay. My instruction for you to answer my question. Are you able to be quiet? What right do you guys now? think? I'm asking you, ma'am. I'm asking you guys. Maybe it's just me, but I don't think the Lord would approve of her going to the crowd and being manipulative because people in the, you know, the plane aren't going to say, you know, shut up, boop, right? <laughs> They're just not. I mean, sometimes you'd have that. People are, you know, are savage on the internet, but bonus holes in real life. And so she's kind of, you know, she's being polite and it would be hard for people to say, hey, will you just be quiet? I just want to, you know, because, you know, I mean... This isn't that bad a thing that people suffer. Um, and But she's, it's being manipulative on her part. What do you guys okay. think? Okay. If you're not able to, be, to follow my instruction, yeah. you will not be taking this flight. Ah, okay. Are so you able to be asking. quiet? If that's the case, then that's fine. If you were the so person that's yes. in charge of it all. I'm your flight leader, yes. If you're the person in charge okay. of it all, then that's okay. fine. Okay, all right. All Thank right. you. So I'll sing it on a loan for y'all in the back. So the dude walks away <laughs> and she says, I'll sing it on the low for you. I'll sing it on the down low for you guys <laughs> in the back. <laughs> and this is, this is kind of great. If that's okay. All right. So the song is called We Can't Forget Them. All right. And you can download it. I don't know the, the issue. No one else has ever had an issue, but it's. Father, I thank you for each day in my life. Now she checks for the dude. <laughs> she looks over and she's um she's checking to see if the guy's coming back <laughs> or he hears her, right? She's she's singing uh you know, she's singing secretly to the to the blade. I don't need anything, I need you. She has a nice voice. I mean, she's doing this a cappella on a plane competing with the, you know, you hear the jet engines in the back. I mean, it's not, you know, ideal acoustic or whatever. It's There's no instruments or anything to keep time or whatever, whatever tone and pitch. She's a good singer, right? Um, she was checking. She kept on looking up front <laughs> to see, you know, like she's trying to sing incognito. So just so you know, if you're on this flight, you have been. Thank you so much. You gotta clap on the low. I know. <laughs> so they're doing golf claps. Some of them. Some of the passengers are doing golf claps. Like this woman who's sitting. You can see this woman who's sitting in front of her on the other in the other side of the aisle. <laughs> thank you so much. So look up Maverick City. Maverick City has an album out right now. They are a contemporary gospel group and I have been blessed to be a part of that album. That's called We Can't Forget Them. Yep, We Can't Forget Them. And it's available everywhere. It's on the billboards. So, you know, people like that, you know, they spirit so low. They can't accept it, but I'm here to spread what God needs me to spread. What's great is this woman, like right across from her, has a mask on. She wants no part of this. Like, <laughs> she's, she's can't wait for her to stop talking. 
she's worried about, you know, I don't know what disease she's worried about now, but it's happening. And so she's like, why is this person spraying saliva? <laughs> I'm here to spread that because that's what's gotten me where I am. I quit my job in October of last year, and I just went out by faith. And now here I am. So remember this face and chase the storm. All right, y'all? B-O-B-B-I, storm like the weather. Thank you guys, for sure. Thank you, guys. And Bobby, you're a what now? A two-time Grammy nominated? Yes, just as of today. Two-time Grammy nominated with Maverick City, the Maverick way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There's some narcissism and salesmanship here, but you know, compared to what we've seen on planes, it's not that bad. But people are whatever they are, and flight attendant is whatever he is, and you know. But then she um, dropped a second message. Hey, you guys, it's rest day for me, so the hair is looking a little crazy, but I wanted to follow up with you guys on Delta. Um, they did reach out to me, so whoever called, <laughs> Um, I, I, I can't say thank you because I don't want this man to be reprimanded um, where he loses his job. I simply want us to keep in mind how to treat each other. And um, there was no rules being broken. Um, and it was just me spreading my joy with people after they gave me the go to do so. So I just hope that if he watches this, he's able to learn a valuable lesson on how to treat other people. You know, that's the part that sucks um, because maybe people don't want to hear you sing. Like, you know, there's no thought about that. Like, she thinks she just has a gift, which she does. She's a good singer. And she thinks she's, um, you know, um, I don't know, celebrating or uh, sharing her, the gift that's given her by God. But some of it's narcissistic. Some of it's performative, right? Some of it's uh, whatever, salesmanship, and maybe the people don't don't want you to do it. Maybe they do. And if you're going to go out and do something like this, I don't know if the rules are being broken because she was standing up when she wasn't supposed to. And then she's entertaining people and they haven't, you know, they're not there to be entertained, right? Like I would be happy to see this. Like something like this, you know, it's, uh, I, I like weird stuff. It'd be better if she couldn't sing, right? <laughs> but anyways... This is the invasive Asian longhorned ticks. They've killed a number. Of cattle. They've killed cattle in Ohio, and they're in like um, 19 different states. So that's going on, right? There's another, you know, another good news, right? There's big giant ticks out there, or lots of them. I don't know why they've killed the cows. I don't know if it's. I mean, cows have. You'll see hundreds of ticks on cows depending on where you live. But our cows used to get hundreds of ticks. So this is interesting. So this crow, um, let's see, go start from the beginning. So it wants to get into this bowl There's this vulture's drinking out of. So it goes up and it's going to pull the back of the vulture's feathers. And the vulture's going to turn around and, um, you know, it's like, hey, what's up? Something's bothering me back there. So it turns around and it's like, it looks, blames this dude. <laughs> I'll show you this again. And the crow goes and takes a bath. So the crow devises a plan here. And it's, you know, there's this vulture behind. It's like, all right, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to get this of an effort here. And so it, um, you know, the fear of the vulture goes, Hey, look, you stop pulling my feathers. And he goes in and scams it. Crows are good at that. Like they're really smart and they strategize in ways of taking the food from eagles and vultures and things. It's a, a turkey vulture, by the way. Um, so that happened. So this is from um, Newsweek. Surge in vaccine lawsuits forced Biden administration to hire more attorneys. Um, so that speaks for itself. Son of Hollywood power player hit with three counts of murder in wake of torso dumpster discovery. Um, <laughs> again, the headline speaks for itself there. The WHO chief declares end to COVID-19 as a global health emergency. The head of the U.N. World Health Organization has declared with great hope an end to COVID-19 as a public health emergency, stressing that it does not mean that the disease is no longer a global threat. Now, this is great. I mean, I don't need to say anything here. <laughs> One of my viewers sent me this. Um, you know, the dumb and dumber guys be the dumber dumber guys. Um, 
<laughs> That's wonderfully done. That's a very creative meme. Okay, so here is a man who identifies as a baby. He's got some adult Wednesday and a diaper on, it looks like. And he's being kicked out of by the, the park by some baby-phobic police here. We just can't stand that this guy, uh, can't understand this guy's, you know, identifies as a baby and he gets to sit there in his onesie in a park. He isn't a threat to the other children or parents or anything. So I can't show you this, can't just play the volume because it's music here, but these kids are having cardiac arrest. This is a new ad from a Toronto uh, hospital. And all these kids are doing, you know, normal kids things. Kids are riding their bikes. And this kid's on a bench here and starts having a cardiac arrest because this is just normal behavior. Here's a, a tiny little toddler who um, falls down and starts having a heart attack because, you know, he's a little baby. And, you know, that's normal for babies just to have cardiac arrest, right? A couple of kids here are taking a selfie. And look, that's too much. I'm taking a selfie. Look, my heart. And then he pulls his, holds his chest and has a cardiac arrest. Let me get the defibrillator. This is totally normal now. We just got to, you know, we got to recognize the kids just have heart attacks and drop dead for no reason. After much consideration and conversation with my family, I've decided to give up smoke. Please respect my privacy at this time, Snoop Dogg. His officials, <laughs> it's a tragedy, he can't smoke pot anymore. Cardi B speaks out to defend Will Smith's following salacious claims, uh, salacious sex claims. I got fooled a couple of weeks ago. Was it a couple of weeks ago? I don't know. My time has been fucked up. I don't like how I was fooled a couple of weeks ago. Some people just never change. Never, never, never change. And you want to know something? I don't like that sh I don't like what people be doing to Will Smith. I be feeling like Will Smith is very unproblematic. And I feel like he got like a nice heart. And that's the thing. I found out that Will Smith is a Libra. I always said this, like Libras, we be getting tried, we be getting tried. Okay, so it's about you now, right? <laughs> oh, Will Smith's a Libra. Well, let me tell you about me being a Libra. <laughs> so I used to cover Cardi B all the time. I haven't heard her voice probably in, I mean, since the Joe Biden ad, right? And I used to think maybe it was an act. She wasn't this stupid and she wasn't this, you know. But apparently... Some of the viewers said that her Spanish is even worse. Like she, I thought this might be her second language and, you know, whatever. Uh, but people said her, you know, she comes from the Dominican Republic and her Spanish is even worse. So um, apparently she really is this dumb. And then when we outburst, we outburst so fucking heavy that we become the, the ones in the wrong. Because when we, when we throw that outburst after we get so much... Our, we we go so crazy that people be like, oh my God, what the fuck? Oh, this bitch is, re is really crazy. Oh, this bitch is fucking crazy for real. And I feel like y'all doing that to Will Smith. And I don't like that some people never fucking change. I'm so tired of people picking on that man. Dead ass. And like, I feel like I'm not, it's not even, uh, your job as a journalist, you should, you should, like, be able to detect whether somebody is bullshitting or not. Because anybody could say something about anybody. Look what happened to me in 2018 when a bitch that I never, that I don't even, I, I didn't even know her fucking name. Like I said, I'm pretty sure she is this stupid. And, you know, with the Smiths, they've lied about everything. I mean, they didn't have a real marriage, and they did goofy stuff. Like, they did things that if you didn't have a real marriage, you wouldn't do. And they lied to all of us, right? And I don't care about because, you know, I go, oh, my God, the Smiths lied to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what difference does it make? But they did lie to all of us. They're known liars, and there's all the evidence I've presented over the years that Will Smith has not been honest about his sexuality. And there's been accusations by other celebrities and things along the way, which I've covered extensively here and my other channel for years. And so the evidence is there. I don't know what's true exactly or not. I don't know if this guy did walk in on him. But I do know the Smiths can't be believed. We all know that. 
And Cardi B, like, just makes everything about herself because, you know, she's really narcissistic and and even and even more stupid, right? She's even stupider than she is narcissistic. Life in Germany as a light-skinned blonde girl making headlines around the world when she had injections to change the color of her skin. Over the past two years, Martina Big has radically altered her appearance in order to become a black woman. And this morning has followed every step of her controversial story. When I was younger, I admired the curves of Helena Anderson. <laughs> I think I've seen this poop before, right? Now, this is the opposite of the movie White Chicks. Like, that color doesn't look real, right? That color doesn't look like it actually is a black person. But the problem here is her voice and her accent. <laughs> Everyone knows you're, you're a blonde white German girl with black face on, with permanent black face on. Like, no one's going to mistake this voice. My next step is going to pump up my lips also. My eye color has changed. My eyebrow color has changed. And I can feel in myself that I'm changing to a black woman. Because <laughs> you're crazy. You don't even look human. I mean, <laughs> this is like a bad joke. And this is how crazy she is. Like, she's mutilated her body in this way to do something that, you know, just based on her accent and her high voice and her weirdness, she was never going to pull off anyway, right? Like she is in, um, she's doing this just for, because she likes the way that black women look. And, you know, she gets into it here somewhere. Um, I like the curves of black women and I want to um, get them step by step. Well, Martina is here now alongside her new husband, Michael. And good morning to both of you. Thank you for joining us here today. So, I mean, you look at the, the difference there. I mean, <laughs> this is their before and after. We have been following your story and you were, you were never comfortable with your natural appearance, oh, the one you were I, born I was, with. Um, I liked my natural blonde beauty, but also it's like tuning um, the, um, if boys get a new car. They start tuning and then they say, oh, it's a nicer result. Let's find a matching piece and then it's going to be more and more. And Unlike Rachel Dozel and that dude or the multiple people that dude identifies as a dragon or, you know, all these kids who identify as puppies, all these things that are happening, right? That They say inside they feel like this. She says she's doing it just because, you know, she was tired of her look. And if you see the... the car they got and yeah. they have now so it's, it's a work totally in different. progress yeah yeah you've ruined your appearance you look alien like you look you know this is you want to be on a freak show sure you want to entertainment or you want to be on these entertainment shows it's amazing they're asking her question like she's a sane person like what made you but what makes you tick what makes you do something like this <laughs> i don't know i'm crazy <laughs> you know didn't, didn't, didn't you get that i the, the vibe when i walked out here so here are the Kelsey brothers, and um, Travis Kelsey's brother plays center for the Philadelphia Eagles. My wife and I often talk about this, how the quarterback is putting his hands um, basically <laughs> on the taint <laughs> of the center. You know, um, MMA, where the, where, the guy, where the guys go to the ground – and start doing jujitsu, and the guy in the bottom gets in the missionary position and locks his legs around the, the guy he's fighting. Um, but this is even kind of uh, well. Here they talk about it here. Mentioned that you immediately start taking snaps, but he, he made one mistake. He said, "Listen, I don't want to touch your grundle." Listen, ball security number one. You got to get up in there. You got to get that grundle. Right. If I don't feel your hand on my grundle, I don't know where your hand's at. <laughs> That's the reality. Seriously, that's becoming a major issue with the college game because so much of the college game is played in shotgun. <laughs> shotgun, yeah. That when these quarterbacks come under, they like have their hand like barely touch. I'm like, bro, I need to feel some pressure. Like, I need to know where that hand's at, brother. If I don't feel pressure, I have no I'm snapping to my ass. I need to know where the hand is. Touch it. I'll be scared, son. If your knuckles don't smell like some sweaty balls afterwards, then you're not doing it right. Fitz wanted no part of that. He wanted no part. He was like, this dude just had some chili cheese dogs <laughs> he was at the wiener circle last night who knows that this was happening under there that gun is still <laughs> hot i know it is <laughs> that thing is fuming so um yeah that's football so here's what i'm talking about here
terms of football. <laughs> like, get, get in there. <laughs> and then um, with mixed martial arts, here's a guy in the missionary position. This guy's on top of him, right? There's just all these types of um, ground stuff here where guys are on top of each other here, top of each other. Um, this guy's sitting on this guy's face here. You know, you get the idea here. There's um, It's a very intimate, a very lot of intimate contact here, right? Um, this guy's on this guy's back here. You know, like, you make your own, you, you draw your own conclusions. Exclusive Will Smith feels he is the target of a smear campaign after he was accused of having sex with Dwayne Martin by his close friend, Brother Bilal, with wife Jada and their kids, hurt by the shock claim. Brother Bilal claimed he once walked on Will Smith and Dwayne, you've heard this thing before, which I talk, covered, you know, two in two consecutive videos. I have one more thing I want to say about it in Jada. You team? Uh, you team? Fire. Are we fire? <laughs> yes, if he was a police, because he's cold. You know, the guy's cold. <laughs> the guy's. Trying to run across a, a bike race. Okay, so I, you know, I get weird stuff uh, every day. Like stuff I can't even show you because it would be demonetized. Some of this stuff is even questionable. I don't know what YouTube's bots picks up and what they view as not monetizable. But people doing bizarre stuff. Like a guy sent me something a couple days ago. And a dude is, um, and I want to talk about Jada Smith and Will Smith in a second here to wrap this up. But a guy is going up to a bus in some foreign country. And he takes his helmet out and starts slamming it into the bus and hitting the windows. And the dude comes out with a machete, like an old fat guy. And he just starts chopping the guy, right? And the guy throws his helmet at him, and he chops it. And, and, the, and the guy who has a motorcycle helmet, his girlfriend, like, intervenes. You know, the guy's just chopping him up with a machete. I mean, there's things every day. And things I don't get to, things that sit up on toolbars forever, and I... I inevitably don't cover them, but there was weird boop going on, I mean, on a constant basis. And I understand people now all have movie cameras on them all the time on their phones, and there's the Internet. And so, yeah, maybe this stuff has been going on all the time, but it's there's an uptick in it. Like, even for what I'm used to seeing, like every day on Instagram, people will send me something like this, like multiple times. All that stuff you just saw came from couple of days in Instagram, and I have a whole other toolbar that was sitting with a bunch of stuff, a bunch of Taylor Swift stuff with Travis Kelsey and, you know, other things I don't get to and things that are, I mean, it's just, it's like that, right? You know, like I'm, I'm covering this all the time, just bizarre stuff. And so the stuff with uh, Jada Smith and Will, you know, Jada said to um, the guy on that morning show that this guy was trying to shake them down. So she said Brother Bilal had tried to blackmail them for money. And, you know, that is a salacious accusation. Like she was saying that you just can't, you know, you could have your opinion about people, but you shouldn't say things that didn't happen. But if she has no proof that Brother Bilal tried to shake them down, if she doesn't have any proof of that, you know, that's a countersuit. And, you know, the evidence there, I mean, they their reputation is ruined from their own behavior, right? Like anything that, you know, Will Smith and his family are so weird. I mean, the Smiths are known for being weird, right? Like, that's their thing. Their family for years. And it, it just gets weirder. And so anything that's said about them, of course, Will Smith has done and said things that would make you think that he has been dishonest about sexuality. They've been dishonest about their marriage. And so the outrage is, you know, I said this yesterday. Anyways, only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely important for the apocalypse. And the ascension, everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.